the mold making process was a success. We have a flexible, brand new shoe sole. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're at the point now where we're ready to pour the rubber. Right now I have a piece of melamine board underneath this and I've cut these blocks of wood here. And what we're gonna do is screw these down onto the melamine board and that way it creates a box that holds these molds in place. Okay, so now we got the mold screwed down. Now one thing I want to mention, if you look in between these two halves, that's where the weakness or the runs of the mold can come from when I pour in a liquid and it could spill out. So anytime you make a mold, I don't care if you're working with plaster, concrete, whatever you're, whatever you're making, plastic, you want to make sure it's sealed, okay? So I might run a bead of uh, hot glue around the outside and maybe in between the seam to make sure that there's no leaks. Um, but be sure when you're making a mold and getting ready to pour that you are sealing all the seams. And one other thing, make sure you have mold release, okay? So this is a silicon mold release. And when you spray in here and the rubber's done, you can go ahead and uh, release that rubber sole real fast and quick. So make sure that you use a brand of silicon mold release. All right, let's go ahead and get that rubber poured. Okay, so these are some of the supplies you will be needing to make your soles. I want to go over this. This is the silicon spray. And basically you spray this in here. That way the rubber releases quickly. You also have your mold obviously here. Next up, you need some stuff to mix the uh, poly rubber with. And you're going to need mixing sticks. Also, um, you're going to need some plastic cups and... I'll talk about that later. You also gonna need something to mark these plastic cups with. Here are some uh, colored flakes in copper, silver, and you also got like a bronze here. And the obviously die I'm gonna be using, which is a black die for the shoe sole. You also gonna need your rubber, and I'm gonna go over this in probably the fourth video on the different types of rubbers you can get. I went with Simpac 85 because of its durability and that should last a long time for the shoe. And because this has an uneven mixture, I'm going to have to use a scale because this is 85 to 100 percent. So in one cup you have to have 85 grams and the other cup you got to have 100. Okay, so now I have uh, the right portions, 170 grams of A and 200 grams of B. What I want to do is get a bigger cup to mix these both in. This side is where the black dye is going to go. And let's go ahead and get that process going. Okay, so I used a lot of this dye on my epoxy table build. And if you want to check out that video, you can click on this link above. So I think I have just enough for these sole projects, but I'm going to have to get some more dye probably the next time I make another pair of shoes. Um, I've settled on this charcoalish darker gray. And then what I might do is do a gradient for the second layer of pore rubber. I might make it a jet black. So. We'll see how that turns out. Also, I might add a little flake in between. We'll just see how it looks and, you know, just try to do something fun. Okay, I've got my big mixing cup here, and I'm going to be using this big mixing stick. Now, before we can mix these two together, because there's only a four-minute 
uh, pot life and, and then it starts to gel, what I need to do is go ahead and prep the mold over here. For this next part, all we're going to need is some silicon spray. And what this does is allows the rubber to come out the mold when it sets in. So we're just going to hit it with a little bit of spray. All right, now we all we have to do is just wait two hours for it to gel up and solid, solidify. Over here, you can see it's very little bubbling. And like I said, those bubbles rise to the top. And, you know, those are going to be on the bottom of the shoe anyway. You're not going to see them. That's the part that's going to get glued to the shoe. But we just got to wait two hours. And um, after two hours is done, we can demold them and see what we got. Okay, it seemed like the mold didn't leak at all. This uh, bond outside was a little excessive. Guys, all I got to do is unbolt this thing and see what we got. So let's go ahead and get to that. Guys, I have to say I really like this jig. Um... Whenever I make a new pair of shoes, I'm definitely going to be using this jig to make the soles. Okay, I just want to get this on camera right here. Good news is the soles turning out very durable and looks really good so far. Bad thing is the mold is gone. I mean, it's totally destroyed, but that's okay. I mean, I can 3D print another one of these or come up with a better design so that way this releases. But the mold release, oddly enough, wasn't enough. I got to spray more on next time. All right, let's go ahead and get this sole removed. All right, ladies and gents, I am glad to report that the mold making process was a success. We have a flexible, brand new shoe sole. Now, there's a couple of things I want to address, and we'll talk about it right now. Uh, first off, with the sole, there is some discoloration on the bottom. And the reason for this is I had some old dye that was left over, and I'll grab the dye here. And it was basically caked up and dried out. Um, this particular dye was old and it did spot it. It was some places where it was just caked up. And that's why there's a discolorations in certain areas. But that could be cleaned up. Um, I can tell that this sole will be a very durable sole. And will last a long time. I'm glad I went with the Simpack 85. That's this particular rubber right here. And I'll talk more about that next week. Um, but overall... The sole is amazing, and compared to the old sole here, um, it's a direct perfect match. As you can see, it lines up perfectly. And then the only thing I have to do now, the next thing I want to talk about is what's known as the banding that goes around the sole. And I have to model and 3D print and make that. And I'll go into more detail next week, and we're going to go ahead and glue up and finish these shoes up. But as you can see, with the new shoe, this will be going on the base just like this. And this is going to really look nice once I get it glued up. Then I'll put that edge banding on the side, just like with this shoe. And that way that the shoe will be completed. Okay, the next thing I want to discuss is the mold. And right here, I have a pile of what used to be a mold. And the problem with this is, um, I think I didn't have enough release agent. Guys, I must admit, it took almost two hours to just to demold this. Um, but here I haven't demolded the second one, um, just for the sake of completing the video. But the molds work good for one-time use. And 
to me, because it worked, it is a success, but there are also some failures here. I intended to use this mold with the time I spent modeling it on the computer and uh, three hours to two hours a piece printing these out, and I wanted to keep reusing them. So um, I don't know if it was my mold release, and I used this, which is also an old can of mold release, but I've in the past known this to be a pretty good mold release. And I don't know if I wasn't supposed to use silicon or should I use the poly mold release, I'm not sure. But um, this is stuck to this mold like a vice grip. And that's what you do not want in your mold. So literally the mold used to look like this. Now it's just literally piles of plastic. One side I had to melt. The other sides, like this gold, I had to pry away. And this is what's left of that mold, even though I can 3D print another one. So as far as the mold, I'd say it was a 50-50 success. It works. But um, if you don't put a good mold release or enough of this mold release, it's going to be a one-time use mold, okay? I wanted to come on this side about the mold box, and definitely the mold box was a definite success. So I will be using this repeatedly anytime I need to make a new uh, shoe sole or uh, mold something within that size of the box. So this jig turned out great and I will be using this repeatedly. This is gonna be its dedicated use. All right guys, it's getting late. Hopefully next week I'll be able to assemble this shoe together, give it a test run and walk in and do a final reveal. But that's what I'm saving for the start of the new year. Guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting the channel. Definitely like, comment, share, subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, support links will be in the description below. And if you have any questions on anything that I use on the table to make this soul, just leave a comment in the comment section and I'll guide you through that. Guys, stay close to God and your loved ones. Enjoy your designing and guess what? I'll see you on the next video. Peace.